So last night I'm watching Antiques Roadshow, the British version on PBS. What, did you think I was watching the Twins and Cardinals on ESPN? Anyway, if you're not familiar with the Antiques Roadshow, that's when people come in, they bring in items, let it be appraised, then they sit there and they almost faint when somebody tells them it's worth 173 times more than what they paid for it 18 years ago. So a woman brings in uh, a piece of clothing, this frock, a wild, purplish, blue-looking dress type of thing that she said she bought at the opening night of the Apple Boutique store in 1967. And that was an ill-fated retail venture, from what I read, that the Beatles started, where they were going to have all this mod clothing. It opened, like, in November of 67, and I think it closed by June or July of 68. I mean, it was a total uh, financial disaster. But she was explaining to the person, the appraiser, and telling her about what it was like that night. And she says that after the fact that uh, after the opening of the gallery, etc., that everybody uh, went upstairs and the Beatles had a mix, not the final mix, but a mix of a song, and she sat there next to Paul McCartney as the mix of the song Hey Jude was being played. And Paul kept saying, do you think it's too long? Do you think it's too long? That was the big question he kept asking. Do you realize if that woman had just said, Paul, it's seven and a half minutes, cut it down to three, nobody wants to listen to this crap. It could have changed the face of the world. And I bring this up because on Sunday, I'm flying up to Philadelphia to uh, bring my son to see Paul McCartney for the fourth time. Uh, it's the uh, opening leg of the second round of his uh, uh, tour that he started about a year and a half ago. And I assure you, there's going to be a time that there is going to be that seven and a half minute sing-along version, everybody with their lighters up in the air, everybody with their cell phones, with that little flash flickering, singing along to Hey Jude, which I have to say unequivocally is the worst Beatles song ever. Just ever. Now listen, the Beatles were before my time. I mean, you know, I'm a little kid. I'm not exactly following the Beatles. Uh, I, I think I was watching the monkeys on reruns. That was more my style back then. But I do remember hearing Hey Jude often when I was a kid growing up and thinking, God, I despise that song. It's just so damn long. And again, I go back to the Antiques Roadshow. If that woman had just said, Paul, cut it down. Nobody wants to hear the same damn chorus and refrain for seven and a half minutes. Again, it could have changed the face of the world as we know it. So there you have it. This is the thing that I'm thinking about today. And this is why everybody out there should get a daily video report. Really, guys, you got to get the angst out. You've got to relieve yourself of these burdens that you have. Everybody should have a daily video report. I'm telling you, it's very good therapy. And it's probably a lot cheaper than going for psychotherapy, too. Think about that. Who needs to pay a therapist? Just get a daily video report. Recommend it highly. Okay, this is, of course, going to be your Thursday video report. Uh, listen, guys, the charity play of the week won uh, last night. Jeff Benton cashed in interleague total of the year. You got that $79 play for free. Uh, being serious now, you know the deal. The charity play of the week wins. I ask you on a quid pro quo basis to make a donation to a family, an individual, somebody in time of a financial crisis and need. Over the past four years, you guys out there have easily, easily probably contributed, I'd say 300, maybe $350,000. I don't know. I don't have an accounting. I just see the way you guys have responded over the past four years. Um, and today, once again, I'm asking you on a quid pro quo basis to do it once more. I bring attention to you a story uh, about two siblings. Andrew, 19 years old, just completed his first year of college. Laura, 17 years old, just completed her junior year of high school. Uh, these two siblings lost their mother. Uh, their mother, Pearl, passed away on uh, May 17th following complications resulting from uh, surgery. Their father had passed away six years earlier. They need to raise money for funeral expenses. Yes, there was a small house which they're going to try to sell uh, to raise funds, but that's going to be down the road after repairs are done, after they pay back taxes, after they come up with the funds for probate court. Again, they're looking for funds to pay for their mother's funeral. A friend who the daughter is living with, 
uh, set up a fundraising page just a couple of days ago. If you're watching this video here on the uh, website, all you've got to do is scroll down the page. You'll see the link to make a contribution using PayPal, Visa, MasterCard, etc. All the directions are there. You go to the page, you'll see my $250 there as I do each and every time. My money's there. You don't have to put $250 in. Listen, I'd love if you did. But you can put $5, you can put $10, you can put $20. All I'm asking you to do is to participate. That's the whole key to the Charity Play of the Week program, to participate. If you got the play and you won money, I don't care if you make a donation today or a week from today, when you get your money from your offshore sports book, all I ask you to do is to make a contribution. That's how we build a community of caregivers. Listen, guys, right now, you know, I've been sitting here all day on pins and needles because my... Um, my sister-in-law, my wife's sister, who's her only remaining family member, her father died years ago from cancer, mother died from complications of MS, uh, three months ago, out of the blue, healthy as an ox, never had any physical problems, diagnosed with a very rare form of cancer, stage four. Uh, just got done the first three weeks of, uh, or the first three rounds of chemotherapy over the last nine weeks. And as I'm doing this video report, I'm waiting to get word from uh, my wife to see if the chemotherapy has had any positive effect. And God forbid if it doesn't, I don't know where we go next. So there are a lot worse things than winning or losing a game. There are uh, plenty of other major concerns in life. Um, I'm not promising you that making a donation will make things better in your life, but I really truly believe that you can never have enough positive karma and that will be a time in your life that you may not even realize it, but maybe that positive karma comes into play. So again, maybe it's a spiritual journey. I don't know, but I know one thing. All the wins, all the losses mean nothing compared to what I established with this Charity Play of the Week program four years ago. Nobody else would ever have the balls to give away this much money and this much plays for such a good cause. Nobody ever would ever think of something, which maybe speaks to my warped mind at times. But all I know is this. Without you guys out there, this program doesn't work. So again, I'm asking you to open up your wallets and help somebody else in a time of need. And as you know, every time the Charity Play of the Week program caches, a play caches, I give you an added opportunity to save money again. Why? Well, I'm half bribing you because I'm figuring, well, if I save you even more money, even more reason for you to probably make a donation. Listen, I'm not beyond bribing you to make a donation. Uh, today, a little special type of package. Listen, you can save $175 off the purchase price of any Handicapper 60-day package. Any Handicapper 60-day package. And if you do that, we'll go ahead and extend you automatically an additional 17 days right through September 2nd, which leads you right up to the start of the college football season, which gets you all of your preseason action as well. Right through September 2nd, you save $175. You get the extra 17 days if you purchase a 60-day handicappers package. All that coupon, all you have to do is use coupon SAVE175. SAVE175, $175 savings right off the top of any handicapper 60-day package. And remember, if you happen to have any instant rebates applicable, they are going to work as well. The usual coupon I give you also applies. You want to save on a 30-day package of any handicapper? Save $125 by using coupon code SAVE125. And on a seven-day handicappers package, you can save $50 by using coupon code SAVE50. Oh, and FYI, the prices for the packages, they're the same today as they were yesterday, as they were a week ago, as they were a month ago. <laughs> I'm not trying to rip you off, guys. Again, I'm trying to induce you to save money and then maybe give some of that money that you saved to the Charity Play of the Week. So all those promos are over on the homepage. And if you have any questions, you can always contact customer service. Quick congratulations going out to Gabriel Dupont. He won again last night. You got his 89 winner, the A's on the run line, 16 to three over San Diego. Yeah, fine, Bud Black, that really made a change in that team, didn't it? You got it for just $39, a savings of $70 off the regular price, just like you got his 109 winner a couple nights earlier for $39, saving 70 off the regular price. Listen, half price play of the day, going to do what you won better today, looking to cash for a fourth consecutive day, more than half price off, save $70. Craig Davis, 109 max wager release, Boston, Atlanta. 
88 and 67 in his six years here at the site with 109 plays in all sports combined. You get it for $70 off simply by using coupon code Davis, his last name, D I, I'm sorry, D A V I S. Once again, Davis, you save $70 off that max wager play. Heads up for you, Scott Delaney, who's made $10 betters a little over $37,000 the past four years with 50 dime plays or higher. He has his inner league game of the year tonight. An 80 dime play, his second biggest play on the same side as Craig Davis. All your other promos, et cetera, are over on the homepage. Uh, gambling gods were smiling on me personally last night. Um, you know, not every handicapper here at the site specifies pitchers. I always specify pitchers on my bets. Always have done that. Always, always, always. Uh, very rare exception sometimes, maybe, maybe, and I can probably count on two hands. The times I've only specified one pitcher, but 99.9% .9 of the time, I always specify both pitchers. And it paid off for me last night because, listen, I had the Washington Nationals last night with Jordan Zimmerman, but Tampa Bay decided because there was a chance of rain, rather than potentially burn out their starter, Tampa Bay decided to start a reliever last night. So that negated my play, canceled it right out, right? Scratched it off the books. Good thing. Nationals lost that game five to nothing. My free picks last night took a split as I cashed in with the Kansas City Royals and lost with the Yankees, unfortunately, as a road uh, do home dog on the run line, but still 27 and 17 run, I believe it is, with the complimentary plays. And I can live with that over the past three weeks. Let's get to your complimentary plays tonight. I'm going to take the Toronto uh, Blue Jays uh, plus $1.25 on the run line at home tonight against the New York Mets. Bartolo Colon, my man. I backed him in his last uh, couple of starts. I think the last two times I've used him, he's won both of those outings. The poster child for any 45-year-old man in America who's 80 pounds overweight and always dreamed of being a professional athlete. This guy, you should have his poster up on your wall. Uh, he's got a 3.86 earned run average in five road starts. He's won three of his last four starts with 3.46 earned run average in that stretch. Matter of fact, he's won seven of 10 road starts with an ERA under three and a half. But I say you go against the Mets here tonight for a couple of reasons. First of all, they're on the road. Mets, 3-12 and 12 road skid. The other reason, the Blue Jays are playing at home. Uh, last night, 8 nothing after losing the first two games of this home-and-home -home series at City Field, 3-2-4-3. They exploded for an eight spot last night. Remember, prior to losing those two games in New York, they had won 11 consecutive games. They have now won seven straight at home, scoring 50 runs in the process. Even that should be good enough to give the support to R.A. Dickey, who, listen, he has an ERA of over four and a half at home this season. But I will tell you, the Blue Jays have won four of his last five starts. They were shut out in the lone loss in the four wins. They scored 30 runs and 3-0 in that stretch at home. So I'm going to go with the Blue Jays on the run line at home as a dog. I'm also going to take the Atlanta Braves plus a dollar, oh, I'm sorry, plus a dollar five, almost pick a money at home tonight against the Boston Red Sox. Listen, Clay Buckholtz going for uh, the Red Sox. 3-9 uh, and nine Boston in his, uh, is in his last 12 starts. 1-4 and four in that stretch on the road. Shelby Miller going for the Braves. What a pickup he was from the Cardinals. I didn't see this one coming, let me tell you. Uh, did beat the Braves. I'm sorry, the Red Sox, as a member of the Cardinals in his only appearance against Boston last year, August 6th, uh, one run and four hits and seven innings of work. He's got a 1.59 earned run average at home. He's got a 2.02 .02 ERA on the season. Braves won 5-2 last night after the Red Sox had snapped the seven-game losing streak with a 9-4 victory the night prior at Fenway. Again, one of those home-and-home uh, interleague uh, four-game series. Bottom line, the Red Sox have lost eight of their last nine. They've lost seven straight and 10 of 11 on the road. And in that 11-game stretch on the road, they've averaged just 2.3 runs a game. So I'll go with Atlanta here tonight as your other complimentary play. Best of luck to you all, guys, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow when we do this one more time.